You might be wondering how to customize the colors in your ZBrush. Maybe you've seen online that someone had some cool colors, or you just want to give it a little more personal flair. There's a couple ways to do this. The first way is up here in the top corner of the screen, right next to default Z script, two buttons that say load previous user interface colors and load next user interface colors. These are kind of presets that are loaded in with ZBrush by default. Now you could click through here and see if there's anything you like. If so, just start using it. It's as simple as that. However, you might want to change some stuff around. In that case, I recommend finding one that matches closely, at least in some aspects, of what you'd like to see or want to go with it. So in this case, uh, another thing we want to look at is the palettes here. They're pretty cool looking and they can be very different with how the buttons are treated. Now we can do it all manually, but sometimes it's a little easier just to start from a place that's already close. So I'm going to go ahead real quick. I'm going to go to config and I'm going to restore standard UI to bring us back to where we were. And let me demonstrate how we can go about customizing the colors to make them more personal. So the first thing we want to do is open preferences, go to custom, or sorry, right under custom UI is eye colors. And I'm going to dock this by clicking the button over here. That's going to put it at the, the side of our screen. And so we have a bunch of swatches here. Clicking any one of these is going to automatically apply your current color. So for instance, I have white selected. So if I click uh, one of these, it's going to change it. It's kind of subtle here because it's a gradient, but it's going to change that color to white because I had white selected. So I, want, I might want to change that back to orange. So a nice way to do it is by clicking and dragging from within a swatch will let you color pick anywhere on the screen. This includes the color picker over here. So right away, maybe we want some purple buttons. There we go. We just clicked and we dragged over and we got it. So again, remember, if we just click it normally, it's going to fill with our current color. So be careful. Be careful with that. I'm going to put it on purple because I think that looks pretty. Uh, a couple of the ones we want to pay attention to and how to edit them. So the big ones I think are main, main two. These here are the switch button ones, uh, the push button ones. And you'll see what they do just by clicking and dragging. Notice what's changing on the screen. And to undo this, I'm just going to go back to the button itself and then let go. So we don't make any changes there. Um, but this allows us to preview where the, the colors are being changed. And so that's really helpful because maybe we don't want to accidentally change some of those. So the main, the BT, the switch ones, and then I believe border one and two here. I think also make a pretty big difference. So those are the ones that we're going to focus on. Um, the background one, there's something to know about editing the gradients real quick that I want to touch on. So if I, I want, let's say a gradated background. So let's say I want it to go from a, a green to a, a darker blue. So I'm going to get my greens here just visible so I can color pick them. Click main, drag it over, and let's just pick a green. And then main two is going to be the color it's going to gradate towards. So I'm going to grab a blue, click and drag. But we're not seeing a gradient right now. And I'll, I'll show you why. So if we scroll down, we get these commands, this UI gradient merge, UI contrast. Um, and editing those right now, it's, it's not really giving us a gradient. It's just kind of changing the colors. Uh, this is because we have a curve that controls a gradient and right now at least in the default UI color scheme uh, there's nothing in it so we want to adjust the focal shift which is going to change that curve and now all of a sudden we're seeing the blend and that's pretty cool and so you could play with some of these other these other buttons here but that's the main one we need to worry about and you could click and drag within it if you want to make a change on your own And then I can undo that. And then now if we go down to the gradient merge, you'll notice it's kind of blending those two colors together. So we could choose the colors we like and then slide this to kind of find a sweet spot. 
and then if you want to change the the contrast from there you can but it's it's changing i believe the whole ui contrast so i like to keep that up at 100 so now you can change the colors and you don't have to worry about changing the curve part anymore you can just say okay maybe i want a more desaturated color whoa that was a bit much for me Now let's see why why is it doing that? Those are just too bright. So maybe the purple and the blue, and that's just too bright. So I could go down here. I'm gonna close this and then play with the gradient merge. Maybe I could find another color I like, but in, in this case it just simply looks like the colors were too bright. So we gotta be aware of that, and then we'll go a little lower in our color picker. So that's how we could change that background. Now, what about the inside here? I believe this is border. There we go. So you could do something similar, and you're going to control it the same way. So maybe I want a similar color there. And it could be one of these. There's the palette, sub palette, buttons, and each of those is going to control, for instance, the buttons. If you look at the gradient where it says ZAD and MRGB, it's controlling how that gradient appears. So you have a lot of control over this. And you could just fill it completely if you like and get rid of that. Um, like how the preset was, we just go to 100 or negative 100, and it's going to be a flat color depending on which of the two swatches it's, it's looking at. So the last thing we want to do, uh, now that we know how to edit all those, you also, if you read through here, you got... Uh, control over the text too, which is nice. So like the text color, you see that change in everywhere. So there really is a lot of control here. But the background, why can't I find that? And so in order to change the background, it's actually in document. And it's it's the background color. So you have your border colors here, which you'll notice on the other side of your screen, it's activating those buttons. But the background is here. And so we could click and drag the background, and we control this one a little differently. So let's say we want to go with a yellow, but we're going to make it a lot darker. So let me go ahead, select the yellows, document, background. Now I'm going to go with a deep color. Now to edit this, I need to use this range, center, and rate. And you'll notice how it changes. So we could, if we want it flat, we could get rid of our range, we could put it at one or the other. So in this case, I'm going to make it zero. So it's just that flat color. And then the rate, let's see what that does. I think it changed how, how much the gradient. Yeah, you could change where the gradient is kind of shifting to. But in this case, I like turning the range off and then just picking a color, like maybe a dark gray. And then maybe you just want subtle gradient to dark. In which case you could slightly adjust like the gradient rate and stuff like that. So that's how you customize that too. Now it kind of looks like a, <laughs> a circus here. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset it. But if you wanted to save this, under eye colors, you hit save UI colors. And that's going to output it to a file. Now the colors will be saved with your config if you do store config or save UI. Save UI does store the colors as well. But by doing the eye colors, save UI colors, that lets you load those colors on any UI without messing with the actual UI layout itself. So it's handy to have those two separate. I'm going to pop this back to normal. That's where we started. But I don't personally change too much. I like to change these button colors and maybe just the overall background a little. There's some really nice default ones to start with. Um, but get creative with it. 